want to know how you prepare for a golf tournament. Ah, uh, well, I um, hit balls maybe 20 minutes, putt a little bit, smoke four or five cigarettes, drink three Diet Cokes, and go to the first tee. Some days I won't even go to the range. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're listening or watching this. And it's another edition of the Daily Puck Drop. It's Tuesday, July 2nd. And as you can see, uh, we are broadcasting from the Puck Sports Studios, built by our good friends at Limback Lumber, family owned and serving the Northwest since 1930. Northwest premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings. And you know, summer's here. That is deck and fence season, and everyone's going to help you out over there at Limbach Lumber, the Puck Sports Studios built by Limbach Lumber. It doesn't look fantastic behind us. Now, if you're listening there on the podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, you're like, well, I can't see it. But you can contact them. Go to LimbachLumber.com uh, or give them a call at 206 782 348 Seven. If you are a do-it-yourselfer or a small contractor, Limbeck Lumber's got you covered. And get there now. They look at that. Look at that. Where's, where's that? Look at that jacket back there, huh? How pretty is that thing? How awesome is their gear? They've got apparel there. Uh, you can get. Uh, you can visit them online at LimbeckLumber.com. Also follow them on Instagram at Limbeck Lumber. And uh, again, anything that you need in terms of uh, lumber, any projects at home, fence, a deck, anything. Uh, contact the folks there at Limbach Lumber, the Limbach Lumber Studios here as we bring you the daily puck drop, hashtag the DPD, here on Tuesday, uh, July 2nd. All right, no Mariners game to cover, uh, but we'll get you set for the Orioles uh, series tonight. We're going to talk about something that Jim Duquette and both uh, Bill Kruger said on yesterday's show, in case you missed it. Uh, just in terms of some comments that uh, Jerry DePoto made uh, when he was on with uh, Jim Duquette. And then, of course, uh, Bill Kruger, who joins us on Mondays. We talked yesterday with Bill about players feeling pressure, uh, specifically uh, Julio Rodriguez and then also Jorge Polanco. We'll get you ready for the Orioles uh, series uh, tonight. I mean, the Orioles are just a juggernaut offensively, what they have coming in. And uh, it, it's amazing where the Orioles are at right now. Offensively, they're they're great. Their pitching has been decimated by injuries, but yet still pretty good. In fact, their ERA, their team ERA for starters, is better uh, than the Mariners. Some huge news coming out of the NBA, uh, one involving what's the future of the NBA in Seattle, and then free agent signings galore. And there's going to be some free agent signings. I'm going to go over some names. I, I, I watch the league. I mean, maybe not as religiously as I once did, but there are some deals that were signed yesterday by a couple of players I've never even heard of. And the amount of money that is being handed out is just stupid. Kraken, uh, we'll, we'll briefly, uh, briefly touch on what the Kraken did. And then, hey, what the puck? Uh, we've got a great announcement coming up on uh, hey, what the puck. But let's get started with the uh, daily puck drop here. And we'll start off with Jim Duquette. Jim Duquette was on the show yesterday. And he was detailing his show that he has on Sirius XM. MLB Network Radio. He hosts it with Jim Bowden. And they have basically the entire show is just welcome, bringing on GMs and managers in baseball. And they, they talk to these guys frequently. And Jerry DePoto is a frequent guest on their radio show on Sirius XM. And when they were talking on Sunday, uh, DePoto told Duquette and Bowden, hey, don't worry about it, the deadline. We can do anything and everything that we want. Very aggressive, uh, for sure. Money was not going to be an issue. I know that's been an issue. You know, they've said that before, but, you know, he was basically confirming that again, like uh, adding payroll is not going to be an issue. Um, so it seemed like offense and, uh, and bullpen, and there w wouldn't be financial constraints necessarily like there were this past winter. He, he wouldn't mm. acknowledge that this winter, but you and I both know that was the case. Now, now that's what DePoto told Duquette. So when, when Duquette told me that, I just, you know, internally and I think externally, I just shook my head. We've heard that a million times from this organization. I mean, how many times have we heard exactly what DePoto told Duquette on Sunday's show. There are no financial constraints. There's no, no one is restraining us from doing anything. 
We have heard that year after year after year with these guys. Now, for DePoto and, and even Hollander, I guess the counter to it would be, I, I don't know what else you're supposed to say. I mean, I don't think those guys are going to come out and say, well, well, yeah, ownership didn't let us spend any money, so you know we had to you know, just compile a bunch of guys together and, and throw it against the wall like, you know, like it's the, the, you know, the scene at a major league, right? But it's just the same thing every year. I mean, everything that they did in the offseason was about them cutting payroll, all of it. Uh, you know, we, we detailed it yesterday with, with, you know, with the Jared Kelnick trade. I mean, in, in order to to cut payroll and to cut Marco's contract, they had to include Jared Kelnick in the deal. Now you look at what Kelnick's doing, and it's been unbelievable. I mean, many people at that time didn't understand the move, and, and, and to this day still don't understand that move. I, so I guess I, I kind of want to give him a pass just in a way that this is just kind of GM speaking. These guys say this stuff all the time, but to me, it's just absolute lip service. And I don't think any fan who heard that or watches that or ever hears DePoto say anything about, hey, you know, we've got no, no, there's no, there's no constraints on us. There's nothing. We're good. We got all the finances in the world we want, but that's, we know that's not the truth. You know, even Jim kind of, you know, detailed that, you know, and the, and the last bit of the soundbite was, but that's exactly what they did in the offseason. It's exactly how they uh, slash payroll. I, I don't care what John Stanton says or what he wants, the, the, the re, you know, his reality, how he wants it perceived, but that's, that's exactly what they did. And so to hear him come out and say, no, we've, we'll, we'll be fine. We can do anything we want. Well, I, I guess we'll, as fans, we'll just sit back and watch and see. Because, I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's maybe just a glass half-empty look. I don't know. But I, I don't see them, you know, uh, doing a deal in which they've got to acquire someone and take on a bunch of payroll. I just, I don't know. I, I don't see it. I want to be proven wrong. I hope I'm wrong. You know, Duquette brought up, you know, maybe a Cody Bellinger move. Okay, fine. Take on his contract. That would be great. Luis Robert Jr. makes perfect sense just because he's under club. He's just under control. You know, I think all of us never have felt that Pete Alonso uh, would be a viable option for Seattle because they just don't, they never have a history of wanting to rent guys. Nor do I think that they want to pay him, even if they did rent him. And now the Mets aren't even going to make him. You know, probably available. They've got the capital to do a move if they want to do a move. You know, but these moves, like in, in brought it up with Duquette yesterday, a lot of the stuff they could have done in the off season, financially addressed, you know, some of their needs, which they have failed to do so in the last three off seasons and failed to do so at the deadline. Uh, but just going back to the off season, free agency money, they never even had to spend any money or excuse me. They never had to spend any of their, uh, their minor league prospects. All they had to do was spend money and keep all these guys if they wanted to, but they've elected not to do that. But if they're going to trade, do they have enough talent? Well, of course they do. They've got five of the top players in the MLB top 100 pipeline. Cole Young's 23, Harry Ford's 24, Emerson, uh, Colt Emerson is up there, 44, uh, Lazaro Montez is 55, and then, or excuse me, 53, and then uh, Celeste in the shortstop is 90 seconds. So do they have the capital to do it? Yeah, they do. Will they want to pull it off? Does he want to trade young talent to go out and acquire a bat? It seems like that's kind of the, the only way that they can get any offensive talent because they just cannot attract. It's either they can't attract people here because they don't want to pay them enough money or hitters look at this place and go, no, I'm out. I don't want to go there. It's got a reputation of a bad ballpark to hit in. So if if you want me to come there, you're going to have to overpay me uh, a lot of money because we've just seen how many free agents come to this team and then just struggle offensively. We've seen it already with Garver this year, and we've seen it with Jorge Polanco, and that's where we go next. We, we were talking to Bill Kruger yesterday about players, just players in general feeling pressure because I had asked him, hey, do, do you think they feel pressure watching what Houston is doing right now? And he, he 
And Bill downplayed it a little bit, said, no, nah, that's kind of more of a media thing. Players don't think about that a lot, but then did acknowledge there are a couple players right now on this team that are feeling the pressure, according to him. Who do you think is feeling pressure because he's supposed to carry the team? Julio Rodriguez. Yeah. He feels pressure. Yeah. He, he sure as heck does. Okay. He, he's got a smile and he's got energy and he smiles and he's having fun, but man, he's feeling pressure. He's feeling pressure for sure. Polanco feels it because he kind of he kind of knows the clock is ticking. The sand's slipping through the hourglass with him, because you got a kid that's got some zoom and can run. It's sitting there waiting to play, and he ain't getting it done. So yeah, I think he's feeling it. The rest of them aren't. No, don't think so. So since coming back, uh, Polanco on May twenty second, he's hitting two nineteen. His slash lines two nineteen, two nineteen, uh, two fifty. That's your second baseman. But even before that, he was 192 with an on-base of 298. Uh, so, yeah, is he feeling pressure? Well, yeah, he hasn't performed all season long. And that was post-injury, and that's pre-injury. I don't – I'm not convinced Ryan Bliss is the future second baseman of this team or that if you give more ABs to Ryan Bliss, is eventually he's going to be exposed in the league. I just think at this point – you might as well just run him out there more. I think I think the time you want to give it to the All Star break to figure out if Polanco can turn it around. Why don't we give it to the All Star break? And then I think if he has yet to get it going at this point, either you address it at the deadline. Jonathan India's name's been out there for the Reds. They're playing him at second base. Maybe you acquire him. You've had a long. You've had a, a great trade history with the Reds. I mean, you've done work with them before. I'm mean, hell. Depoto's done work with everyone. Then maybe you maybe you look at that option, or you just give it to Ryan Bliss and just say, you know what, we're just if we're gonna sink or swim, we're gonna we're just gonna go with you. You are part of a trade. You're part of our. We think you're part of our future. Let let's see uh, what you can do. And the same could be said what they want to do uh, here soon at, at first base. I don't know if it's quite where Polanco is right now, but I I again think you're getting there with Ty France. And no, everybody loves the guy. That's why it's just hard to watch him continuing to struggle all the time. But in June, 138, he's slugging 241. His OPS is 557. I, I don't know if Tyler Lockler's the future, but I think when Lockler came up, he showed power. Yes, he's going to strike out. The knock on him was his, the defensively, he's not a great glove. I don't know. All the opportunities I saw him, get to make over there at first base he looked good he looked m more than good so do you give it to the all-star break with france do you give it a couple of weeks after but i think that's a decision that this organization is going to have to start looking at and you're going to say well god they're they're leading the division they're in a pennant race so you want to hand it over to two rookies but if the other guys aren't getting it done i, I mean nothing right now for them is working consistently offensively nothing something's got to be shaken up do you move around the order a little bit more again you've had rodriguez hitting second you've had him hitting third now do you hit him lead off i mean you got to start moving guys around all over the place to see if something can finally land to get these guys going because what they can't do is just depend on this pitching staff for the rest of the season it's going to wear out you see them getting tired all the time they're going to have to address the bullpen they're going to address the bullpen at the deadline as we uh, chatted with duquette and kruger yesterday just about if you add a, a bat is that going to change everything i mean if they both acknowledge yeah probably not i mean it's the regular players and i know it's a broken record we talk about it all the time but it's just the regular players on this team have got to get it going and get it going now it's got to i mean it's got to start tonight i mean guys like julio have got to get going jp crawford I mean, those guys, two two guys in particular. I mean, I think it's really at, at this point kind of a lost cause there for Ty France. So you, you really unfortunately falls onto the shoulders of, of Julio and JP to really start being the catalyst up for this offense. They got a juggernaut that's coming in tonight, a buzzsaw of a team in the Orioles. You got Grayson Rodriguez and George Kirby tonight. Hey, the bet M's under summer tour continues. People want us to change it up. They want us to start betting the over, but we will stick with the under don't let anyone bully you bully you into taking the the over the over under tonight seven and a half bet the under uh it's 27 28 and two is our record uh, all season long 
Orioles, again, as we mentioned before, have had a bunch of pitching injuries. And they've lost three guys, right? It's uh, like a, I wrote it, it's Bradish, Tommy John, John Means, Tommy John. Uh, Kremer's on the IL. He's working in the minors right now. Tyler Wells out for the season with a UCL. Yet their starters still have a 3.36 ERA, which is better than the M's. Corbin Burns is at 2.28. Rodriguez is at 3.72. Cole Irvin at 4.06. And uh, Albert Suarez uh, comes in there. Uh, there at the 274. Gunner Henderson, this offense, man, it's just stupid. Number one in OPS in baseball, 778. Number one in slugging at 462. Number one in home runs at 140, 139, which is 16 ahead of the Yankees, who are at second place. And it's a bunch of lefties, too. They're just going to feast, man. Uh, Gunner Henderson, 288, slugging 604, OPS of 989, 26 home runs, driven in 58. Adley Rutschman, maybe Ben Nicholson Smith was right. Uh, Adley Rutschman, of course, the uh, the switch hitter out of Oregon State, two ninety four average, three fifty on base, four seventy one slugging, eight twenty one OPS, fifteen uh, home runs. He's driven in fifty five. Mount Castle's got an OPS of seven seventy seven. He's got eleven home runs. He's got forty RBIs. Uh, Westberg. Uh, the right-hander, he's got uh, an 837 OPS. I forgot Santander, switch hitter, 230 with an OPS of 803, 22, and 55. I mean, damn. <laughs> what a freaking juggernaut that these guys are, man. An absolute murderer's row of offense. And they're going to come at him tonight, starting tonight uh, with Rodriguez against Kirby. And we'll see how these boys uh, respond uh, they don't think the Orioles have announced who's going to go on Wednesday. I know Gilbert's going to go on Wednesday, and I don't know if the Orioles – I don't think they've announced the the last two starters of the series. I know Miller's going to pitch uh, Thursday, it looks like, uh, for the Mariners. But huge test again for these guys uh, before they take on uh, the Blue Jays uh, afterwards. But what the Orioles have been able to do uh, with their starters, with all their injuries uh, that we mentioned before, their bullpens, ninth in baseball, three five six. Many would say, and many argue, this is the best team, maybe the best team, well, yeah, best team in the American League. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention the rookie, Colton Kowser. He's a 751 OPS. <laughs> Just stupid, stupid what they're doing. Uh, Houston won again last night, so that lead now for the Mariners is down to three games. Jordan Alvarez hit his 17th home run. Hunter Brown just continues his resurgence. Uh, six innings last night, uh, five strikeouts, didn't allow a run. Four earned runs in his last six starts. And uh, tonight, uh, Houston game two against uh, Toronto Spencer Arigetti against Jose Barrios. Well, move yesterday, uh, switching gears over to the NBA, that might have been a little under the radar for some. Uh, but right when I saw this news, I knew exactly what it meant for one of the minority owners. So the Boston Celtics, the news came out yesterday, just what, uh, less than a week after they won uh, the title, they announced that they're going to sell uh, the basketball team. The group purchased it back in 2002 for $360 million. Well, I would say a pretty good investment, by the way, by these uh, by these chaps, because Forbes has valued the Celtics right now at $4.7 billion. <laughs> Quite the investment by those guys. The smartest business thing that you can do. Purchase a professional franchise and then sell it and just eat all the profits. They don't lose money. They never lose money ever, 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 ever. That's why if you, if you root for a, a particular team and you beg them to spend money and then they don't spend money because they say, well, you know, we, we have a budget. I would like to say to, to said team owner, yes, but when you're old and want to sell, you're going to quadruple your money, more than quadruple your money. Oh, man, Suns were just sold in 2023 for four billion. That's the Suns. The Suns. Okay. The Phoenix Suns went for four billion. You're talking about with the Celtics, besides the Lakers, the most recognizable storied franchise in all of basketball. I mean, they're valued at 4.7. I don't know what they're going to go for more than that. Uh, bearing the lead here uh, real quick, because the lead is David Bonderman, 
who is the uh, an owner for the Kraken, is also a minority owner of the Boston Celtics. Well, you're going to say, well, what is he going to do? Is he going to move the Celtics to Seattle? Which somebody did ask me on Twitter. No, they're not moving the Celtics to Seattle. He can't own two NBA teams. He can't have any stock whatsoever, any percentage with another NBA team. So the fact that he's a part of this group that's selling, it's the worst kept secret in this town and in all of the basketball world that Bonderman and then his daughter, Samantha Holloway, are going to lead the group that is going to own the new NBA team here in Seattle. In fact, she's going to be the president of that team. She's going to be the principal owner of that team, uh, Samantha Holloway. She's going to be lead the whole thing. But Bonderman behind the scenes is, is, you know, one of a handful of others that are going to be the money behind that team. And so, again, this is just another sign. It clears another hurdle that the NBA is going to return here. We just don't know when. It is it is it frustrating because you want it here now if you're an NBA fan like myself or you're a Sonics fan like, like me and like many of you are. Yeah, I mean, I want it now. Like 25, 26 is when I want it. I don't want to wait any longer. A lot of people are leaning towards 26, 27. They've got to finalize officially the media deal, which should be happening soon. And, uh, and then we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. And I, I don't even know what the situation in Vegas is. I don't, I don't even know if they've even broken ground at all on that new arena that they were supposed to, to start, which is led by the, the same group that did Climate Pledge. But that was, again, for those who don't know, another sign that the NBA is getting closer and closer to coming back, another domino falling in this situation. David Bonderman was a minority owner. He had to eventually at some point get rid of that stake that he had in the Celtics because he couldn't also own uh, the new NBA a team here. So he couldn't have a piece in the Sonics if he was still a member there of the Boston Celtics. So that was huge news uh, yesterday in the world of the NBA when it pertains here to Seattle. Uh, free agent signings. Crazy to see that that Clay Thompson will no longer be a member of the Golden State Warriors. 13 years that he spent there in a Warriors uniform. He agrees yesterday to a deal with the Dallas Mavericks. Three years, $50 million there for Clay going into his 14th season, which is a damn good payday. As you are kind of on the, you are on the, the downside, uh, you know, the ninth inning, the final quarter of your career, and you get $50 million on your way out. It was a hell of a run there for Clay, and whatever happens in Dallas is, you know, it will either add to the legacy. It's not certainly not going to hurt his legacy. You know, top six, I think, all-time in, in three-pointers, four NBA championships, uh, 13 great seasons and great years there in Golden State. But it's sad as a basketball fan, I think, to see those three being now broken up. It was inevitable that it was going to happen, but you've grown so accustomed here, you know, in the last decade to have those three, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, all together. So to watch it next season and not see all those guys, the Splash Brothers on the court at the same time, is going to be an odd feeling, and the, to see him in a Mavericks uniform is going to be weird as well. It's a great landing spot. Really was convinced he was going to go to the Lakers. That's where he grew up. That's where he's got a home. Of course, his dad played there. Uh, but with Kyrie, uh, there with, uh, obviously, Luka, the ability for those guys to drive, penetrate, and kick out to him. And he'll, you know, his role changes, not dramatically, but a little bit. But he becomes more of that just spot-up three-point shooter, which – you know, is where he should be at right now in his stage of his career, just health-wise, where he is at. Um, good move there for Clay. It's a hell of a run, and he got paid on the way out. And there was just some crazy NBA contracts handed out yesterday. Jason Tatum, five years, $314 million, largest deal in the history of the league. So he's making sixty, about $63 million a year. That's more... I think by a couple hundred thousand dollars, that's more than the entire Oakland A's payroll. Jason Tatum, 63 a year, $314 million. My God. And the same day they handed out $126 million uh, there to uh, Derek White. So they know they're going to get paid when they sell this team. They're going to probably get over $5 billion dollars. Uh, for it. But there was just other huge contracts that were thrown out there, and it involved the Dust Bowlers of, of all teams. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, who played for the Knicks, who had just a great run for the Knicks, he gets $87 million over three years. These were the two guys I touched on earlier. I'm going to tell you. 
I think I watch a lot of basketball, but when I read the news that Aaron Higgins just signed with the Thunder for five years, $47 million. He's 25 or 26 years old. He's a guard uh, for the Thunder. He averages seven points. And I know you're saying, well, he does other things better, other things good. Okay, but he averages seven points. And this guy just got $47 million. His teammate, Isaiah Joe, who's 25, averages about eight points a game too, just got $48 million. Four years, 48. He just handed deals out left and right in the league, man. Why couldn't you? I'd be 6'3", 6'4", and fast and athletic and good-looking and talented. Uh, too much to ask? I don't know. That would have been nice to have. Uh, Donovan Mitchell also gets a, a huge uh, contract extension with the Cavs. Many people think he thought was not going to resign there, was not going to go back there, but he does. $150 million uh, there over three years. Different sport, but still free agent frenzy. The Kraken were aggressive yesterday. They got two of the top free agents in all of um, uh, hockey. Uh, Brandon Montour, right-handed defenseman, and then Chandler Stevenson, a centerman. They got both those guys. So the Kraken, who didn't commit any money last year, who did, hardly did nothing, and a lot of people were critical of them of not doing anything, uh, they commit almost $100 million, 94 million dollars good job by by ron francis in, in that group because i think whether it was their strategy last year not to do anything and maybe based on how they played this year and how putrid they were on 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 offense they said to themselves what well, we need to drastically improve this team somehow some way we didn't do it last year maybe we just didn't feel that the players were right last year so we didn't want to commit the money so but then they flipped it this year and i, and I wonder in part did they have to flip it not only just to improve the team, that is clearly the number one reason why they went out and acquired these two guys, but they needed to give their fan base something, like a little bit of jolt in the arm, to say that, hey, yeah, last year wasn't good enough for us and wasn't good. we didn't put a product on the ice that was good for us, but also wasn't good for you, the fan base. And when you have a team that captured the city two years ago when everybody was was in on the Kraken. And then you follow that up with not doing anything in the offseason. You lose a little bit of the trust and the momentum that you had built up. They lost that. And then the season was was a dud. And it never really got on it never got going ever at any point. And it was just a failure. You lost interest in the team. And as as each week went by, month went by the interest in the crack and got less and less and less. And then you, 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 you get to the end of the season. People are dumping their season tickets. They're not renewing. They're doing ticket packages and ticket specials, something they've never done before, at least not at th this rate, because people weren't coming back. And if you lose people, you lose that fringe fan. It's a long time before you get them back. So I think what they did yesterday was – a two-parter not only was it to improve the hockey team which is again that's like 90 percent of the reasoning probably more than that number two was they they needed to make a splash they needed to get the fan base engaged once more uh into their team because that we've i think a lot of people have said this before and, and in the past the, the second that nba team is announced the entire focus of the majority of people in this city and that winter sports scene is going to be focused on that basketball team, and it will steer attention away from the Kraken. N not the diehard hockey fans. Not the diehard. No. They're going to stay, and they're going to be with them uh, the entire time. But good, good move there yesterday by, by the ownership group and then by Ron Francis. And they also announced their uh, season opener uh, for the Kraken coming up. First time they'll be at home, they'll be taking on the St. Louis Blues. It's going to be October 8th, part of that triple header on ESPN. And looks like they get the day game. So I don't, I don't, I think it's early, like 1 30 or 2 o'clock, that the uh, Kraken will be playing there on October 8th. All right, we wrap up with uh, Hey, What the Puck. We had a great scrimmage last night. Uh, the 11 U uh, baseball Ballard All Star team scrimmaging our 10 U team. Boy, the 10 U team took it to us. <laughs> and I was glad. I'm glad they got to take it to them. I'm glad those 11 year olds needed it. They needed a wake up call. And uh, but it was a fun night, fun night to see uh, two groups of uh, kids who all know each other get together. And it's uh, just a fun time of year, uh, baseball and this all star thing. It's just there's a just a lot going on. There's practices every night, scrimmages all the time. But uh, it's just fun. And it was just some great baseball. And it's 
good to see a bunch of families out there and kids out there all running around and, and all just trying to, you know, communicating with each other, encouraging each other uh, and all of it. So all the families and parents and uh, many of you watching or listening to this that are in the, the middle or it's kind of closing right now here of these all-stars and it's a long baseball season and this this portion of the baseball season is crazy. Uh, good luck to all. Uh, the main tournaments, uh, at least for the uh, the 10s and 11s, uh, start uh, this weekend uh, across our state. So uh, good luck to all of them and uh, have fun. That's the most important thing. Have fun. I've got to remind myself of that uh, many, many times. It's just fun, and it's just baseball. It's not life or death. And, again, I've got to remind myself of that all the time. Uh, again, we've always mentioned this. The voicemail line is open. We try to play the best ones uh, every single Friday. PuckSports.com, upper right-hand corner. You'll see the voicemail line there. Uh, click it. Leave a voicemail. Can be. Uh, we try to keep about 30 seconds if you can, please. But if you go a little bit longer, that's okay. Uh, if you listening right now, I'll give you the phone number. It's 425-577-7272. 425-577-7272. We love funny voicemails. We like our characters. We want people to be smart asses. You could be serious, but we prefer funny and smart asses. But the uh, voicemail line is open. Again, pucksports.com. All right. It is a uh, holiday week. Uh, and so. Uh, many of you are going to be in and out of this, so we'll mention this many, many, many times uh, leading up into next week. Uh, July 8th, right? Is that next Monday, right? That sound about right? If I look on my calendar right now with July 8th, I should probably know this. It is Monday, July 8th. Uh, I can't wait for it because his uh, his purgatory time is up. On Monday, July 8th, you guys have asked for it. We have found him somewhere surviving in Bend, Oregon. And if we can pull Jim Moore, the go-to guy, away from his morning routine of walking the dog, uh, probably having them off leash illegally somewhere, jumping in someone's pond, killing ducks, or hitting a bucket of golf balls or getting ready to be security at a concert uh the go-to guy will be back with us on monday for the daily puck drop the go-to guy and puck that's me we return we reunite together on monday july 8th what are we going to talk about <laughs> what would you like to hear on the very first uh podcast with the great jim moore the go-to guy on monday now looking ahead the rest of the summer our schedule with jim looks like we'll probably do like monday wednesday friday uh with him uh he'll join us on the daily puck drop moving forward and you know what if that senior citizen can maybe survive and work a little bit more than three days a week maybe we'll add a few more i'm i'm excited to have him back it's been a long time i feel like we've been doing this i've been doing this you know solo now for what three three plus months it's been great but uh, i miss him dearly uh, I just miss bantering with them and just having a, a fun time with them. And I think uh, many people out there, uh, when you're listening or watching, know how I feel about him. So to have him back, to always have that guy in my corner and uh, consider him just a, not just a, a colleague, coworker, just a real good friend. And so uh, it's going to be fun. We have talked a lot. So it's not like this will be the first time we talk, but we have probably a lot to go over uh, there on Monday as the go-to guy will return here on the Daily Puck Drop, the DPD, and Puck Sports. So uh, look forward to that. We'll keep uh, reminding you of it leading up to it. But I know this week's kind of wonky with all with you know 4th of July and all that. It is a, a Tuesday, so we'll talk to Brad Adam later today. Also, John Canzano uh, from johncanzano.com. So uh, stay tuned for those episodes dropping a little bit later today at Puck Sports and PuckSports.com. This is the Daily Puck Drop. Uh, we've been broadcasting from the Puck Sports Studios, built by Limbach Lumber, family-owned and serving the Northwest since 1930. Premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings. As we've mentioned before, summer deck and fence season is here. No better place to stop on by and get some help than Limbach Lumber, limbachlumber.com. Give them a call as well at 206-782-3487. Uh, find Mark and Matt. Usually they're not doing much. They're kind of just, you know, walking around lazily. But grab them and say, you know what? Puck told me to come on down here 
And maybe they'll even give you a free hat. Maybe I'll talk to those guys, Matt and Mark and Paul. Hey, if someone comes in there and said, Puck told me to come down here, maybe they'll throw you in a great T-shirt or a hat. Let's just say that they're going to. You know what? We'll tell them later. We'll tell them later. That's what they got to do. But uh, always appreciative of those guys. Again, Puck Sports Studios built by Limbach Lumber. That is it. Episode 192 here on a uh, Tuesday, July 2nd of the Daily Puck Drop. We'll talk to you later. As always, we promise to be better. No shirt, no shoes, no dice. So. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>